Okay, we are back in session. We're continuing our journey through the Sector Void. We left off. We just departed with Star Green on our way back to the Legion's main hub, the Sanctuary Station, to see how they are doing in regards to rallying up the other factions while the Starship Marauders are going to gather their piece and set off to the Legion also. I think that was what we were, what we were planning. So, Otherwise, we're, bet we're going back to the um, Sanctuary Station. So this, this was my... I think this was my typing here, so we'll hit continue to see where the AI will put us. And I am... Uh, oh, I forgot to switch to the model. One second, guys. Let's switch to... I'm having trouble with the wizard's model, and I forgot to switch it back. Let's scroll. There we go. I was experimenting with, with that model, but obviously it did not go well. So, wizard's model is off the table for now. Okay, as you and Star Green ship exit the Astro Belt, you engage the warp drives and leave the dangerous field behind. The stars outside the cockpit window stretch into long luminous streaks as the ships traverse the vast distances of Sector Void. The journey back to the Sanctuary Station is relatively uneventful, but tension remains high as both you know the challenges await you upon your return. So our current context is we are literally about to hit the cap but that's in recall to memory. That that does not include memory, obviously. So, okay, let's uh, let's check in with uh, Star Green. I'm going to radio Star Green and ask how he is holding up. Stargreen's voice crackles through the comp system, a hint of amusement in his tone, as well as it can be expected in this line of work, Flex. It's good to be back on the move, even if it's not for, even if it's for a serious mission like this one. He pauses for a moment before continuing. How about you, Lex? You've been through quite a ordeal yourself. I'm gonna get a little personal here with my character, so I'm gonna try to see like this I feel like I'm gonna tell him I feel like all of this mess was because of me. I say, well, I won't lie. Star. I feel like this whole mess was my doing. The minute I shouldn't have opened that crate. Let's see if the AI knows the star green. I don't know if Star is aware of what originally happened. You feel the weight of the actions and consequences they have brought upon the sector of one of your friends. Sargon's voice comes to this comp, softening slightly as he responds. Like we all made mistakes in our lives, but dwelling on them won't help us now. What matters is we're working together to make things right. Yep. At the same time, I will say I appreciate that, Star. But at the same time, I feel you go with the AI would have probably done more damage. And I talked about this in the last episode, saying that if we didn't discover the AI, it probably would have been more loss of life. As it looks, oh, it didn't really seem to continue it. Uh, I'm going to erase that. I want to see what he says back to me. I guess not. Let's just make it our own. Can we do a story? Uh, let's see. Star pauses before replying, thinking of what Hugo would have done with their massive firepower. I'm trying to give the AI that nudge. I want to see what he says. Don't skip it. Sargreen's voice crackles to the calm, the hint of. I'm, yeah. I do apologize for the, about the redundancy in the AI's uh, explanation of the environment, but we'll move on. You might be right, like, if he goes ruthless force and the, their advanced technology, 
end up causing more chaos and destruction, but we can't we can change the past when we focus on what's in front of us. Speaking of what's in front of us, I think we are nearing a sanctuary station. As the lexicon and speeder 5 exit warp near Sanctuary Station, you see the massive asteroid fortress looming in the distance. Its heavily fortified exterior is a patchwork of metal and rock, numerous defensive emplacements, and docking base downing's defensive. Okay, so one thing I've noticed is that we actually haven't landed on a planet yet at all. Noble was the Noble has been, I think, the only planet we've talked about numerously, besides a few outposts like the legion like the stop haven legions post and then that little hiding spot outpost with start uh, start creating marauders so but besides that, i really hope we do get to explore a planet eventually if we get that chance soon but i have a feeling we're nearing the climax of this of this campaign so um we are i was going to do a story here i want to do a little push another ai push in the story Lex and Star both see a vast fleet of various factions surrounding the station. Lex compliments the fact that Maximus has been hard at work gathering the troops. As you and Star approach Sanctuary Station, you can see a vast fleet of various factions surrounding the asteroid fortress. Lex complex effect of uh, Maximus has been hard at work gathering the troops. The Lexicon and Spear 5 glide to the emptiness, uh, the empty expanse of space. Their cloaking devices active and engines humming softly. Okay. Lex and, or I should say Lexicon and Speeder 5 both drop their cloaking Acknowledging. Well, I should say cloaking, readying themselves to dock with the station. Well, are we going to dock or are we going to radio Maximus at this point? I think we should dock. The two ships, Lexion Spear 5, glide towards the Sanctuary Station, the cloaking devices deactivating as they're prepared to dock. The asteroid fortress looms large in the view screen, its heavily fortified exterior, a patchwork of metal and rock, right? We know that. Numerous defensive emplacements and docking bays dot, uh, dotted surface, and the vast fleet of various factions surrounding. Okay. We're kind of co writing it now, I feel like. Um, both ships, let's see, dock in their own respective places, noticing the docking area is packed with various beings. Lex uh, powers down his ship and cautiously steps out actively looking to find where star dots okay uh as you step out of the lexicon you see the star green speeder five parked a few bays down you make your way through the bustling docking area exchanging nods glances with various beings to represent the factions gathering at the station the atmosphere is tense, yet focused, with everyone preparing for the impending confrontation. You go. You find Star Green in her ship, chatting with a few members of the Legion. Lex walks up to the group and nods. He asks if he sees Maximus. Uh, let's say, maybe Maximus just walks in. So Max, Maximus approaching the group from... Uh, from a doorway.
Maxus greets you in the start room with a firm handshake, express and serious. It's good to see you both made it back safely. I've been coordinating them with the Beg Five, and they're ready to join forces with us you go. Us against Hugo. We should finalize the details of our, of our plan. Lux confirms the update. Confirms they found the starship Marauders. Whoops. I'll type that off. Then Marauders. And... And Roran's well-being. Whereabouts? I should say, and Roran's plan to meet here to assemble the fleet. Maximus nods, a hint of relief in his eyes. Excellent. The more allies we have, the better our chances are against Hugo. I've already received intel about their mov their movements on Planet Noble. They're amassing their forces in preparation for full-scale invasion of Sector Void. We need to act fast. Who has the... I just realized, who has the... Uh, let's search for it. Uh, device. Let's go back to the top here. Uh, the two ships like Scott and Goliath. The, the cloaking device is no... Oh, it's a jammer. That's right. It's a jammer. Raspberry. Uh, let's see. Using the jammer to disrupt their communications. That's perfect. We'll go ahead back. Except the group. I think Rowan has it. Stack of those forces. I don't think we really mentioned who has it physically. I'm going to assume that Rowan has it. So, say Lex mentions of uh, let, sorry Lex mentions that Rowan has the specialized jammer and configured it to do a to do more what did he do to find configured it for a oh yeah that's right to find Xerox to find the exact location of Xerox. They just... The jammer just needs to be in close proximity. Proximity. Alright. Park is uh, to the credit for that one. Max's eyes widen at the mention of the specialized jammer. That's excellent news, Lex. With that jammer, we can gain a significant advantage in our fight against Hugo. We just need to get close enough to their main ships. You and Star Green and Max discuss specifics of the plan, including how to coordinate various factions and ensure that jammer uh, is used to maximum effect. Lex and Star agree that their ships are fast and advanced enough to sneak uh, let's say sneak up to their main fleet and initialize the jammer the strongest factions can take can tank the first barrage first attack while the rest can strike from the sides. Perhaps that might be a formidable plan, I hope. Just made that up on the spot. Um, as you, Lex, and, <clears throat> as you, Lex and Stargreen, I am Lex. Well, right, as you, Lex and Stargreen. Find out the details of the plan. You can't help but feel a sense of unease, right? You, I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just not a fan when it says you can't help but feel a sense of unease. All right about the impending confrontation with Hugo. The stakes are high and the outcome is uncertain, but you take the solace in the fact that you're not alone in this fight. You have the support of your friends, allies, and various factions. All right, so... Let's say that the Marauders, the starship, moments into their conversation, Mar uh, Rowan and his team warp out of light speed and dock at the other end.
As Rowan and the Starlight Marauders disembark from their ship, you can see the determination in their eyes. Rowan approaches the group and reports to it that his crew is ready to join the fight against Hugo. He also mentions that they have brought along valuable supplies and reinforcements to aid in the battle. Maximus nods in approval, a look of respect and crumb crossing his face. Okay, so Marauders are here. We're here. Star's here. Maximus here. All the big five factions are here. The Marauders are not a faction, per se. They are a neutral, like, Red Cross kind of uh, group of, you know, like your Red Cross, Salvation Army kind of um, group. So not really necessarily a faction, per se. Um, but there is the Grey Merchants. So suddenly, I'm going to throw a little drama here. Riley Gambit walks out of the bustling crowd with a few of his strongest crew members. Maximus turns to see them and is unaware and was unaware that they landed already. Lex, Star, and Rowan step uh, ready their pistols in case of another bout. Riley Gambit stops a few paces away from the group, his eyes scanning each member before settling on Lex. Lex and Lexicon, he greets, his voice smooth and steady. It seems we meet, we meet again under different circumstances. A tense silence hangs in the air as Lex and the others remain on guard. Riley holds up his hands, palms facing outward in a peaceful gesture. Okay, this is unusual. I'm going to say what's the catch. So Lex lowers his hand from his blaster what's the change of heart we have to be really cautious here I, I don't want to be like all right cool <laughs> welcome to the team you know then it backstabs us later on riley gave a chuckle softly his eyes gleaming with a hint of mischief a change of heart no likes i would call that call it that i'm really you see an opportunity to benefit from the situation you go as a threat to us all to all of us, and I'm willing to put our differences aside to assure the de de their defeat. Lex studies Riley for a moment, trying to gauge his sincerity. So think about it like this: with a Dragon Ball Z reference, Frieza Saga, wait, uh, Namek Saga, the Gini Force specifically. This is like Vegeta joining forces with Krillin and Gohan. So, you know, we still know that Vegeta, who is Riley Gamut in this case, is going to do something mischievous. Maybe not deadly, but if you recall, Goku arrives to Namek. Vegeta takes off. I think that might happen at some point down the road. So we have to keep that... Uh, me, as I guess the storyteller, I have to keep that in mind if the AI forgets of Riley's, well, known characteristics. Star appears doubtful, but lowers his hand also from his blaster. Uh, let's see, Rowan still maintains a grip on his blaster. It might be out of character. Uh, Maximus doesn't seem to speak, but is making sure nobody takes a shot. Lex doesn't uh, shake Riley's hand, but nods slowly. So I think Lex is going to be, he's kind of accepting of it. Riley again, it seems to understand Lex's hesitation, which draws his hand, a small smile playing on his lips. I assure you, Lex, my intentions are genuine. I have a proposition for you all, one that may turn the tide in our favor. The group's still worried about intrigue. It waits for a light to continue. I propose that we pull our resources and share intelligence on Yugo. Hello. Wait, what other... And what would that be? Riley Gannett's eyes meets yours. His calculated look on his face. 
We have a network of spies and inf oh, that's right, he's a gray merchants and informants throughout the galaxy, including within Hugo's ranks. With our resources, you're a specialized jammer, and we can pinpoint Xerox's command ship, disable the communication network, and create an opportunity for a coordinated strike, so that we stand a better chance of defeating Hugo and preserving the sector. Okay, I'm going to stand up for this. I just thought of a an amazing twist right here. He said, talk, he just talked about the jammer. This might have been an AI, this, this is obviously an AI overlook, but this could help out in a twist. He just said they have spies throughout Sector Void to an extent and within Hugo. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Watch the magic happen. All right. Lex steps back for a moment and doesn't recall mentioning the jammer at all to uh, Riley. Moments later, Tark steps out from the shadows, walks through the group, and stands beside Riley. He hands Riley the jammer, then steps back behind Riley. That's the twist. Tark was a gray merchant this entire time, an informant. I want to see what if the AI can obviously pick on the, pick up on the hints here. Riley Gamma catches the jammer with a smirk. I believe this is what you're referring to, Lex. He looks at the jam uh, device and has an impressive technology. I can see what you want want to keep him hidden with our, co our combined resources we can put. All right. It didn't really catch it. Let me make it a little more clear. So I'm going to edit to the here. So Lex steps back for a moment and doesn't recall mentioning the jammer at all to Riley. Moments later, Tark steps up from behind Ro uh, Rowan, walks through the group and stands beside Riley. Uh, Rowan asks Tark, what is he doing? I guess that's not really a speech. Tark um, hands Riley the janitor that steps back behind Riley. Riley, uh, Riley Gambit mentions again that he has spies throughout I should say Riley chuckles and mentions again that he has spies throughout the galaxy, throughout Sector Void. And it looks like, yeah, let's see. Now I want to see if the AI picks up on this. If not, we'll just have to drive it ourselves. But that's the twist I wanted to do for some, well, actually since, well, a few months ago. I'm acting like I had this planned the entire time. Riley Gamma continues, I assure you, Lex, my intentions are genuine. I propose a proposition for y'all. Nope, that's a that's a repeat. Try it again. All this. Alright, it's not really catching the glimpse here. Not really catching the hint. We'll keep mentioning it. Let's say Tark steps out from behind Ron, walks through the group, and stands beside Riley. Rowan asked Tark what he... Yeah, Rowan asked Tark what he... Uh, Tark doesn't answer, but appears to... appears to have been a spy for Riley. The I should say the Grey Merchants this entire time. This sends a shock throughout the team. Tarkins Riley the, ga uh, the Jammer then steps back behind Riley. Riley Gambit chuckles and mentions again that he, had, that he has spies throughout the, the Sector Void. Okay, I'm going to do a say. Tark, you seriously work for this this guy? Alright. Just to mention that. 
Charles Gates drops to the floor, avoiding eye contact. He nods slowly, guilt edge to the space. Yes, like so. Well, no, I, I want him to kind of be like he's two faced. Uh, yes, Lex, I've been working for the Grey Merchant all along, but I want you to betray you, but this is the only way I can ensure the safety and survival of the Starlight Marauders. We need your days. Now, I don't want it to be too friendly. Let's say this. Okay, so, Tark, you seriously work. Uh, let's see. Tark. Tark smirks. And replies. Keep your enemies close. Well, no, that's too cheesy. He says, no regrets. Riley grips the jammer firmly and looks to Lex. All right, let's see what the AI does after this. Riley's gate shifts to you, expression of a mix of confidence and satisfaction. It seems we have a man on the inside, Lex. Tark here has been providing us with valuable information for some time now. He's been instrumental in helping us keep tabs on Yugo's movements and plans. You can, right, here we go again. You can't help but feel a pang of betrayal as you look at Tark, your old friend and ally. Well, not old friend, but I'd say an ally. Old acquaintance. <laughs> All right, we'll keep going. This this is fine. This is acceptable. I say probably, you know, C plus, B minus. It, at least it knows now that... Um, Park is, didn't really have much regret, as he says. So, uh, Riley, or Roran, is visibly shaken by this betrayal and promises to not forget this once all of this Yugo crap is over. As you stare at Tark, a wave of emotions washes over you, shock, disappointment, and a hint of admiration with his duplicity. Riley Gambit senses your discomfort, offers a con uh, consolatory gesture. Lex, I understand your feeling. No, 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 not. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Rowan is visibly shaking. You know what, guys? Actually, no, I can't. I was going to say, let's use the. Um, GPT-4, but I don't think GPT-4 does violence as well. We can't do long model. That one only has like 2,000 con... Let me see how GPT-4 works behind the scenes. One second. Okay, I have GPT-4.0 now. Here's hoping it works. I'm guessing this will come up. So I purchased 500 more credits. Hopefully that wasn't a waste. Not a lot. It's only five bucks, but... All right, let's try this. So continue. Hopefully the air doesn't appear right up here. But new AI, this might take a second to... Let's see how 4.0 uh, does. Riley, uh, Riley Gamut glances at Rowan, a smug smile on his face. I understand you're angry, Rowan, but right now we have a common enemy. Let's focus on defeating Hugo first and so we can settle our differences. Our right, Maxus finally steps forward. He's commanding presence, cutting through the tension. Enough, we don't have time for the internal conflicts. If what Riley says is true, it is valuable intel on Yugo, then we have to use it. Maximus. I, I do like the reply. Maximus turns his head and stares at Riley. You do intend to play your part. All right, I, I want him to like really step on Riley in this part. Riley again meets Maxwell's gaze with unwavering confidence. Of course, Riley replies smoothly. I'm not here to sabotage our efforts. My goal is to see Hugo's influence eradicated from Sector Void, just like the rest of you. Maximus nods, though his eyes remain sharp and distrustful. Fine, we'll pull our research intelligence, but know this, Riley. The moment this is over, we settle our scores. Ooh, probably, uh, we call a standoff. All right, so. Then let's get our ships st uh, stocked, fueled, and ready for this.
Well, we need to, actually, I made a mistake. We need the jammer. The tension in the air is as everyone begins to prepare for the impending confrontation of Hugo. The various factions gathered at Sanctuary Station uh, move with a renewed sense of purpose. Their determination to protect the sector void evident in every action. Uh, let me check some of the quick blah, blah, blah. Let's see. It's... Okay, so... Model settings. I want to see what the safety features cut at. Moderate. So I can't do mature. That's obvious. Okay. That works. All right. So let's see. All right. Roman's team quickly sets up uh, sets up to work, ensuring that their ships are stocked with supplies and fully fueled. Starting coordinates of their factions sh sharing tactical insight. Okay. Uh, let's see. Lex walks up to Star and asks how are they going to use the jammer if Riley Gambit has his claws on it. Star Green's eyes narrow as he considers your questions. We'll need to keep a close watch on Riley Gambit and sure he follows through with his promises. If he tries anything suspicious, we'll be ready to intervene and take the jammer back. Listen to the, uh, vigilance. We'll need to stay one step ahead of him. This is our best shot taking down Yugo. We can't afford to let the ship slip away. All right, so... Riley Gambit once more walks up to Lex and Star with uh, with the jammer in hand. Riley mentions his ship is the fastest in the in the sector and will personally use the jammer once in range. So I'm throwing a little wrench into the plans here. Let's start a change of glance. Their skepticism is evident, but recognize the potential advantage of Riley's plan. Riley Gambit maintains his compass demeanor, sensing their doubt, but pressing on. I know trust is a scarce resource right now, but this is our best shot at disrupting Ego's operations. My ship can get in and out quickly, minimizing the risk. Lecture reluctantly nods, knowing that this time is with the essence. All right, Riley, we'll coordinate the, we'll coordinate the approach. Okay, so I was having, I don't know if this is my account or there's something wrong, but I'm having some technical issues with using GPT-40 now through here. It just completely wiped out my credits. I don't know what I was doing wrong. Uh, Wizard doesn't work. I'm using Mixtro now, and I am just decided I'm going to stick with it. And, yeah, this is completely irrelevant. Um, so, yeah, Mixtro 16K context window. I'll just, just stick with that. So I do apologize for the back and forth on that, but... I really was not, I'm not too aware of what's, I'm not sure what's going on. But anyways, this is where we left off. Uh, Lex lovingly nods that we've mentioned that. So let's, uh, let's see what, what we can do now. Okay. Okay, Riley, just stay close. If you say, if what you say is true, is true, your ship should be the first to enter enter Hugo's line defense. Do you have some do you have some sort of cloaking? Uh, Riley Gamma smirks and replies, indeed, Lex, the Speeder 5 has been... Mon no, 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 I'm, that's not the Speeder 5. What is the ship's name? I don't, I don't think he has a ship name. Indeed, let's correct this. Indeed, Lex, my... My vessel has been modified with state-of-the-art cloaking device, allowing it to move undetected through the most heavily guarded 
ter territories. I'll ensure I remain close to making you go play your activating jammer at some point. Okay. There we go. Alright, so. Pretty sure your ship should be the first to enter you guys' defense. Alright. While keeping an eye on Riley, nods in agreement. Lex turns to Star and says they should head out. They should depart now while they while they still have time. Maximus overhears this and readies his troops. Readies the, the factions. While Lex walks up to his ship, Rowan follows and taps Lex on the shoulder. He cautions Lex with working Caution likes working with Riley Gambit never goes well. Okay. As Lex and Starling Marauders prepare to depart the section, Road pulls Lex aside with a private conversation. The expression is serious, and his voice carries a note of caution. Lex, I need to warn you about Riley Gambit. Working with him has never ended well for me. It's cunning. He's a cunning, ruthless leader. And I wouldn't put him past him to double cross us at any moment. Okay. I'm gonna throw a little safety a little safety here. Lex agrees, but notes that but mentions he believes Star Green has a has a backup plan for this. And will discuss on their way out. As Lex and Starlight Marauders prepare to depart, Roll pulls a... Let's try again. I think we hit that little moment of repeat. Maxim, Maxim gathers the various factions, gives a uh, rousing speech, emphasizes the importance of unity, blah, blah, blah. Then I guess you go. The atmosphere and the face electric, and everyone eager to depart. You, Star Green, Star Marauders, board your respective ships. Uh, that wasn't really that wasn't really what I was attending for. As Lex and Star Marauders prepare to depart, the same ship, Rowan pulls you aside. It has a loop, I think. But that's our That's my fault. Okay, so Lex agrees. Ships. All right, let's continue ourselves. So, Lex agrees with mentions he believes Star Green has a backup plan for this, and we'll discuss on the way out. All right. Rowan nods and runs back to his crew while Maximus. Okay, we'll just say runs back to his crew. Uh, Lex catches up with Star and asks about a backup, I should say, and whispers to Star asking what would be a backup plan if Riley Gambit pulls a fast one. Star Green gives you a sly smile, passes his blaster on his side. Not to worry, Lex. I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. If Riley decides to pull a fast one, we'll keep the clo we'll keep a close eye on them and be ready to act if necessary. But for now, let's focus on mission and make sure we're prepared for whatever Hugo throws our way. Okay, so story. Lex and 
Let's see here. Okay. Uh, just had to reboot the browser. Kind of froze on me. All right, let's move on. Stargreen gives you a slide mod. Slide mod. We already talked about that. Slice mod. Okay, let's do a story. Lex and Starboard their ships and ready the engines. As you and Stargreen prepare to depart from the Sanctuary Station, take a moment to appreciate the diverse fleet of ships gathered around the Asteroid Fortress. The atmosphere is charged with a mix of anticipation and apprehension. As everyone knows the gravity of the incoming battle, your fingers dance over the console, performing the final checks of the lexic on the lexicon systems. The engines hum to life, their familiar vibration of comfort, comforting presence as you prepare to departure. Like sees Riley Gambit's ship depart first and seems he, uh, to be preparing for work without the team. As Wily Damage ship appears, appears in the warp, Lex and Stargate ships fall close behind. The Lex and Speeder fight glide through the empty and expansive space. Their cloaking devices activate, active and engines humming softly. Is there any plan noble is tense with all parties aware of the imminent confrontation to Hugo? All right. Here we go. So Lex and Star go into warp. As the Lexicon and Speeder 5 emerge from warp near Planet Noble, you see a vast Hugo surrounding a uh, fleet surrounding the planet. Your ships dwarf the combined forces of the factions gathered around at the Central Station. However, in the sight of Riley Gambit's ship, the fastest of the sector already in position provides a, a glimmer of hope. As all of the factions drop out of warp, the uh, Lex radios Riley to activate the jammer. During this time, the Yugo fleet appears steady, not bothered by the faction's arrival. Riley Gambit's voice crackles uh, through the comms, saying, Activate the jammer now. A moment passes, then a visible disruption ripples through the Yugo plate communication systems. The Yugo ships are going to lose its cohesion. Their movements becoming erratic. Lex Stargreen and the other factions seize the opportunity and charge in the fray. The battle is intense and brutal. Okay. Well, there you have it. Um, I'm going to end it here before we actually get into the physical battle, but... Uh, I, I got to get to work early in the morning, so I want to conclude it. Uh, overall, this episode was was pretty good. Some hiccups of the AI, which has been occurring more and more as we as the context grows. But I think it's my fault because I'm choosing the different models, trying to find the perfect one. And GPT-40 seemed to work at first, but I, I don't know what's going on with the using external AIs. Um, the Wizard one doesn't seem to work. I don't know why. But it, it seems that any, I'm, I'm guessing any, I, basically any of the models that require credits, which most likely they're external, don't function appropriately, or I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. So Mixtral has been our go-to for now. But besides that, besides the technical jump uh, hoops, the jump through, the story I felt was pretty good. I. I gotta pat myself on the back for that little twist of Tark he betrayed us, kind of a kind of a betrayal, but now like you know we're still on the same umbrella, which is attacking Yugo. So we're, we have the common enemy, but he did do this little betrayal. So I do like that little twist. I thought it was necessary, and the overall appearance of hey, uh, Riley Gamma just walks right in. So I, I did I did like that little part we threw in. So, but overall episode was good. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too. 
Until next time, I will see you on 830 RPG. Thanks for watching.